We are more sedentary than ever before in human history. From the comfort of our chair, we can shop, play games, and even find a date. We're hardwired for convenience, so it's no surprise that we use technology to make life easier for ourselves. We can do almost anything by the click of a button, the swipe of a screen, even the sound of our voice. But let's take a step back. I want you to picture the long, hot summers of your childhood. I was an active kid back in the 70s. We all were, having fun outside, building dens, climbing trees, having fun with your friends until the sun came down or you heard your mother telling you to get inside. It's amazing, no matter how far away I was from home, I could hear my mother's voice <laughs> in a strong Jamaican accent. Darrell, don't let me call your name again. <laughs> Believe me, she didn't have to call my name twice. At school, we were taught about the suffragettes fighting for women's right to vote. Gandhi walking barefoot for India's freedom. And Martin Luther King marching for civil rights. But how many of us were aware that it is this combination of powerful ideas combined with physical movement that made all the difference? They marched to change the course of history. A lot changed since then. A lot has changed since then. 75% of UK children spend less time outside than prison inmates. Kids, compared to a generation ago, are three times more likely to fall out of bed than out of a tree and be admitted to hospital. Only one in 12 children meet the physical activity guidelines of 60 minutes a day. Over the last 40 years, this has led to an increase in depression, obesity, and type 2 diabetes in children as young as three years old. We are rightly concerned about the added sugar in our diet, but what about the added sedentary in our lives? This isn't just about the kids. 75% of us as adults will die prematurely from chronic lifestyle disease, such as cancer, dementia, high blood pressure, heart disease. But the good news is, small doses of physical activity can reduce the risk of premature death by up to 50%. Movement truly is medicine. If I was going to ask you how much physical activity you did as adults, I gave you a questionnaire, the best version of you would answer. About one in three adults would be meeting the guidelines of 30 minutes a day, five days a week. But when we tell the truth, i.e. we have an activity monitor on us, then it's only one in 20 adults. We're just not doing enough. There's about 1,000 people in this room. That means only 50 of you are hitting the target. What about technology? Is that the solution? Well, half of us that buy activity monitors don't even use them. Games consoles we buy for our kids that have fitness games included, many of them have been discontinued. Technology can be great for us, but it can also be detrimental. For example, the fastest growing sports on the planet are e-sports, played mainly with fingers and thumb on a control pad. But more worrying than that, is that these games are played stationary. What about willpower? January the 1st, some of you made a New Year's resolution to become more physically active. But by the 21st of January, 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. All those people who join a gym in January, 50% don't even set foot into that gym. <laughs> That's the truth. Over the course of that year, only a handful of members are attending regularly. Willpower becomes won't power. 
What about working out? Just think about this. We have more information than ever before on fitness and working out. More gyms than ever before. Books, magazines, DVDs, online programs, fitness apps on our phones. But we're still not working out. Working out is not working out. Part of the problem is the language we use. Slogans like, no pain, no gain. Slogans like, my sweat is my body crying for mercy. <laughs> Don't stop when it hurts. Stop when it's done. Just think about it. Most of us avoid pain. When it comes to movement, we seek pleasure, comfort, and joy. It's no wonder many of us are avoiding exercise. And even the words working out, most of us actually work in, right? It reminds me of the time I was at a gym in Bondi Beach in Australia. It had a panoramic view of the ocean. Most people were working in, running on a treadmill, when they could have been outside enjoying the best of what nature has to offer. Some of you may know that my life is now dedicated to teaching children from four to 94 how to fall in love with movement again. I'm going to tell you about my first client. They worked with an investment banking, very lucrative career, long days, long nights, very sedentary, surrounded by computer screens. They were told one day that they had prediabetes, at very high risk of having a heart attack, severe high blood pressure, and they'd be dealing with low back pain for many years. They started an exercise program, and within a short space of time, they became fitter, stronger, and healthier. There was only one small drawback. They absolutely hated to exercise. Exercise was a chore. It was painful. It was punishing. They had no fun on that fun run. <laughs> it wasn't exciting for them. And the last time they enjoyed movement was when they harked back to when they were a kid playing with their friends all summer long. Some of you may already be aware that this first client was me. <laughs> and ever since that time, I've pondered and wondered about the physical inactivity burden that we all share, the public health messaging that we largely ignore. How can we get more people to be physically active? You know, I can't do this by myself. So I consulted with a leading expert in her field. That expert was my eight-year-old niece. <laughs> and she said to me, Uncle Darrell, if you want to get more people to be active, they have to have fun. And it can't be boring. <laughs> my inner child agreed with her. So I proposed three solutions. One, we should play a game called Dodge the Sedentary. What that means is, if you see the stairs, then the escalators and the lift are no-go zones. The bus stop closest to you, pretend that it's vanished. That way, you have to walk a lot further to get to your destination. If your remote control is somewhere in the living room, get down on the floor and bear crawl and pick it up. <laughs> if you're doing your housework and you're vacuuming, pretend to be Mrs. Doubtfire and have a little dance. Seek movement opportunities that you love, that you cherish. Remember, the world around you is your gym. Better yet, your playground. Secondly, our environment. Our environment encourages us to be sedentary. 25% of car journeys are less than a mile long. That's a 15-minute walk. Very harmful and polluting to our environment. Let's petition our governments to incentivize movement for adults, to provide safe havens, safe spaces for our kids to play outside again. Speak to your employers about giving you more time for movement snacks, for movement breaks, standing meetings, 
walking meetings, standing desks if you want to utilize them. Do you know standing desks are nothing new? So Winston Churchill and Thomas Jefferson used them to improve their productivity. The world around us is our gym. Better yet, our playground. Thirdly, we should be referencing our ancestry. We need to be going backwards to move forwards. Active play was a crucial part of our survival as a species. It helped human beings to bond, to connect as groups, to hunt and gather food, to build shelter, to rear our children. And many of you are probably wondering, well, what's that got to do with now? It's the 21st century. I'm an independent person. I can do everything I want to by myself. But we know deep inside that the quality of our relationships, the quality of our social connections, can help us with our health and well-being. We are digitally connected, but can be socially deprived. You know, I've given you quite a bit of theory. But there's one thing about taking action. It doesn't mean anything unless you do so. So I want to give you an opportunity now to reconnect with your inner child. I'd like uh, three volunteers, please, to come and join me on stage. Anyone like to come on stage? Be quick. Quick, come, 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 come along. Need two more. There's a second, a third. Thank you. OK. All right. So, <laughs> great. And it's, I'm, I'm just so amazed that it's the kids, of all, all three kids have come on stage to have some fun. OK? All right. So you're going to be my partner for this. And I would love you all to join in, because you have to reclaim your inner child. So we're going to do something that I did when I was a kid, which is slow motion fighting. OK? There are three rules. The first is slow motion. The second is it's non-contact, because you want it to be safe. The third is sound effects are optional, but really they're mandatory. So we're, <laughs> so we're going to demonstrate, right? OK. Oh! Ooh! Oh! I've got glasses on, I've got glasses on. Okay, so please join in. If you'd like to, please join in. Let's get everyone involved. Please. <laughs> I know you're limited for space. <laughs> Let's go, keep going. Ooh! Come back on the, come back on the, oh! Non-contact, non-contact. Boom! Uh, one more, one more punch there. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Give yourself a round of applause. That was a great effort. Okay. Oh, wow. But some of you aren't wholly convinced yet. So we've got time for one more game. This is a game I played as a kid. I think all of us played this game. It's tag. But this version of tag, we're going to play very, very close to each other because there isn't much room. So the oldest kid on the block, if you could join me <laughs> on the map. OK, so this is what we're going to do. You're going to partner up, OK? And you can only tag between the hip and the knee. Mm -hmm. And we play simultaneously. Uh -huh. OK, so remember, limited in space, but we just got to play the game. All right, so, good. good. Right. Okay, good, join in, join in. Please join in, everyone. Come on, come on the mat, on the mat, on the mat, on the mat. Thank you. Okay. Please give the volunteers a round of applause. Thank you. I'd like to be the stage. Thank you very much. And please give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. So, something interesting about that experience. Just think how many of you who took part were laughing whilst you were exercising. Doesn't happen often, does it? 
That laughter combined with playing together increases the levels of feel-good hormones, like endorphins. But you get that endorphin rush immediately, not after the end of your 60-minute run. So, I just want to kind of summarize this talk by saying we should be focusing less on working out and more on playing out. We need to focus less on what we look like in the mirror and more about how good we can feel now. We need to play with our kids. We need to teach our kids the games that we used to play. We need to inspire them and we need to be inspired by them. Remember, the world around us is our gym. Better yet, our playground. So what we need to do is to see the world around us like children do. Be fascinated by your environment. Explore your environment. Be curious about the environment. Let actual reality mean more to you than virtual reality. In closing, I like all of you, I implore you to reach in and connect with your inner child and pay attention when they say these messages to you. Play can help us to remain vibrant, happy, and joyful. Play can significantly aid in the health outcome of our lives. But most importantly, play can help us fall in love with movement again. Thank you so much.